joining the army is not just a job but rather a way of life you are taken from civilian street and trained to operate in adios conditions within some of the most dangerous places on earth but no one stays in the army forever this is where the transition back to civilian can be tricky and to some people very challenging in this series i speak to men and women who's been there and done it i find out how they managed to successfully transition back to civilian life and what they would have done differently it is my hope that this video provides some valuable tips for serving personnel looking to successfully transition back into civilian life. This is their story. My name is um, Kobina um, Inchi Boafo. I used to be um, in, in the Army, uh, in the car batch, a Royal Electrical Mechanical Engineer. Currently, I work in uh, material handling. It's the lift industry, so any equipment that aids man manual handling um, in, in the services industry and in the warehouses, um, that's what um, I engineer now. Um, not quite. I would say joining the army was, in a way, um, by accident. Obviously, as a young man, you you know you have to keep knocking at different things. And out of that process of knocking and finding out what you really wanted to do, um, the idea of joining the army um, came on board as well. Like I said, I've worked in um, different sort of places, so it was one of these um, experiences that I met few people who obviously um, had the same condition as myself and we wanted a, a, a better life for ourselves. So the idea of joining the army cropped up around the time when it was recommended by one of the guys who also made the effort to visit um, the career center and um, the amount of reception they showed to him when he went in, um, right away he knew that was the place to go. So in the joining process, how easy, how fast, how slow did it go? Um, in my opinion, you can't, you can't push the speed on the process. It's a set process that you have to follow. Mine, in a way, I can say it, it was smooth to the extent that when I visited the career center and you know, they, they pushed me through the process, um, of obviously, as you would know, you would have to um, do the um, the selection and and all all that jazz that you have to do to, to get in. Um, it all went um, it went very well. I mean, there were a few hitches, but that was to be expected. If I remember well, the team task I had a few issues with the team task because I couldn't really contribute as I would have loved to. So that was the bit I had a bit of criticism when I had to go in for my final interview with with the. If I remember, I, was a, um, I think it was a major. So, in summary, I can claim my was um, it went smooth. Whoa, I remember that like yesterday. Um, it was different, for lack of a better word, because it was a different environment. You would have to put a different attitude towards it. Because obviously, this is a military um, training installation. You get in, they start screaming at you straight away because they want you to get it right, right? They want you to understand you are in a different realm of life. So there were screams, there were shouting and yelling at you. The actual environment, if you look around, you see soldiers being matched all over the place. Um, that sense of agency and reality will hit you straight away. So I would say it was different, but it was an adventure again. Okay, for me, um, my field army career started abroad as well, because I chose to go to um, Germany. So I basically, I finished my training in the UK, um, opted to go out to, um, to Germany. So first day in Germany, very, very good feeling, um, nice country and everything. So I was really looking forward to you know, getting to the barracks. And again, it was also another eye-opener because this is you trained as a soldier 
coming in from the training installation into the field. I mean, they expect, expected your the fitness to be really up there. Um, your level of professionalism and commitment have to be up there as well. So did you feel like um, you always have to prove someone? That, that, this is the point. It's like joining a new company. You always have to, you know, prove it that you deserve that spot. Yeah, but I feel we have been given enough training and enough skill set that we needed at the training level to be able to, you know, command that position or that role again. So it was challenging, but it was definitely achievable. Did you, whilst you were in the army, did you ever think of life outside the army? Mm, not at all. Never. I never um, saw myself living in the army, especially when I when I've done about three, four years, and I really was enjoying the environment, the the work, all the um, other things that came with it, like the the, the camaraderie, you're able to see other soldiers. You know, you build that relationship. I never wanted to um, think about what is happening on the other side of life, so I would say no. Right, it's a it's a mix of uh, many um, reasons. For me, one, it was an injury as well. I had an injury. At the same time, I thought I could commercialize the skill sets that I have accrued over the period in the army. And the third one, I would say, was a bit of my own personal ambition to get to the next phase of life. So it, 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 I would say, but um, all of it. This is what I will say for that question. And this is, I'm speaking for myself. And I feel everyone should be able to build a um, level of planning and projection. Yeah, let me use that word. Before they decide to, to, to leave. For me, when I decided to leave, um, I worked it all into three point strategy. Housing, career, and then the third one, I always call it reality. So as you would expect from any right thinking human you want to know where you put your head first that is the housing aspect how you get around it i feel it's it's entirely up to you some people can decide to go the council housing way some people will decide to get their feet on the um, the housing ladder but how you, however you do it there's enough help so by all means seek that help and, and get it because you will need it and then career the strategy of career you, you want to be um, um, looking at location where you want to be when you leave the army as well because bear in mind you need to understand this country has been blocked into hops in terms of career we have places where there's a lot of warehouses there's a lot of engineering if you are into it there's places where there's loads of jobs for it if you are into finances so i put all this into perspective because i was an engineer coming out I needed to locate myself in the engineering, engineering hub of the country, and that is the Midlands for me. So that is where I looked at my housing as well. So that was the strategy I used, right? I was coming out. I wasn't going to go settle in London because I know London is more for finances and stuff like this. And the third one, I say reality. When I say reality, what I mean is wherever you've been taught in the army, you have to relearn again when you come out of the civilian world. And that is the purpose for why they give you the, the settlement package. So you can learn how to pick your first couple of um, steps or your feet up when, when you come out. Because bear in mind, out here, you'll be paying bills. You, you know what I mean? Council tax and everybody knows what we do on the, on the city street. So you have to come to terms with that reality. You would have to manage your own work and your workload. Because in the army, you get thrown orders by the regiment, and that's why you follow. You follow the orders. So in a way, it's like you are a baby, getting taught what to do every day. You know, sort of um, helping you to build your life. But in the civil streets, it's all in your face, right? You have to be able to get around it all by yourself. So that is what I call the reality. By all means, there's help. You can get mentorship from people who have already come out and are doing it. You can do that, but at the end of the day, it's down to you. So I would say, yeah, that was my strategy for coming out.
I could have started a bit more earlier. And this is to do with forward planning. Could have planned a bit more swiftly. As in, if say, I wanted to leave, say in the next year, I could have started planning two years. For me, and again, I would relate it to my peculiar situation. I put it abroad, it, this is Germany. One, I could have learnt the language and learnt it properly, because that would have been another bow in my ribbon. And I had my undergrad before joining Army. I could have, you know, worked on getting my postgraduate um, as well. Because bear in mind, the Army, Army is a busy envi envi environment, but there's still a lot of time that you get on your hands to be able to do these things if you really wanted it. And again, um, the housing aspect, I could have gone into housing, get maybe one, two, three houses before making that attempt to leave. The reason why I, I put it this way is because when you are in that regimental setting, when you are in that um, environment, you don't spend a lot of money. You actually spend most of the money on things that are not really progressing your life, like your creation, parties, and because it's an environment for young people, right? So you end up spending more money the partying and stuff like this. But if you could have saved some of this money away, this money could have gone into very productive stuff. So I haven't regretted anything, but by way of advice to people who want to make this journey, I would say start planning early. Whatever opportunity that comes your way, like myself, the ability to learn um, a different language, do grab it with both hands and run with it. Like I said, it's, um, it's anything that assists with manual handling. And you know, Europe is one big warehouse. That's the way I like to put it. So obviously, uh, manual handling, it's um, very important to help you know, people to you know, pick stuff up, put them on a racking where you know, they want it, right? Before they get packed up into um, big trucks to be taken away to where they need to be. So my job, my typical day would be, you know, I get my um, report loaded to me on, um, a company provided a laptop. I just pick the jobs up. I've been provided with a works van, as you can see. So basically, you roll out, go to the customer they need you to, to visit and to assist. And then um, it could be whatever job. It could be for finding the, um, the equipment to see what is wrong with it. It could be um, calibrating and commissioning the equipment to site. It could be as simple as training um, operators on how to use the equipment. So. That's how I will sum it up. So how did you get this job? Did you just put it out there? Um, that's one thing I should have discussed in the strategies. You need to highlight your skill set in this country so it, it will sound more attractive to um, prospective employers and recruiters. I would say I have done this through having the confidence to be able to sell myself. Like I said, I always wanted to commercialize the skill set that I learned from the army. Okay, so finally, is there anything that you want to tell me if I want to leave the army? Right, all I would say is plan, plan, plan. And my word has always been planning because when you fail to plan, that means you have planned to fail. Housing, get your housing um, in, in position. Be decided on what career path you want to go and then be realistic. Don't start thinking the grass is greener on this side of life than it is in the army. It's not. You have to work for it. But trust me, the army has given you the right attitude, the right resilience, the right capabilities to be able to get all this done if you want it.